Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another video on Farming Simulator 19. Ever since I played around with the auto drive mod, I just got hooked and it's a freaking rabbit hole, let me tell you. I dived into the mod section and I discovered so much, the community is absolutely awesome in this game. I really became addicted to the automation process of this game, kind of treating this as a management game instead of a pure simulation game and therefore I decided to also go with a different map. The maps of the community of the modders are much much better than the standard maps but I'm gonna explain everything as we go along. We're gonna do the start a little bit differently, we're still gonna start from scratch however the map we are choosing is Obertal. And this map is just incredible, you can do so much, there's so much to do guys. I cannot even summarize it, let's just dive into it and see what happens. These are the mods that we have installed, so you can have a quick look through them. Some of them are a necessity to the map and others are just to automate everything. Here we go, here we are in Obertal. Oh man, this is gonna be so great guys. Now the problem without starting from scratch is that it is purely impossible on this map, since everything is so expensive. I mean, if we have a look at the map, you might not be able to judge, but it is much, much bigger. And of course, the fields aren't straight, which is why I usually wouldn't play such a map. But with course play, this is going to be a different ball game. Now, we are starting right here. This is going to be our farm. However, we own no land. And if we only purchase the farm alone, we already got rid of most of our money. And then we also need to purchase one field and there the money is gone. And we cannot even buy any equipment. And of course, these fields are huge. So I decided to give myself a little starting boost. I'm gonna dive into the safe game and actually give myself 3 million bucks. This is gonna be my starting budget and then as of this point we are alone. In your documents, my games, farming simulator 19 folder and then hop into your safe game folder, you will find the document called farms. Open that up with an editor and you will find your money right here. So we are gonna go with 3 million, thank you very much. And back we are with 3 million bucks, wonderful! Let's have a look at the map and purchase a little bit of land. First and foremost we want to purchase everything that actually belongs to our farm, this is what we would usually start with in the normal game modes. However, I don't want to start with so much equipment, they just give you so much equipment, it's way more than 3 million actually. But yeah, I kind of want to start from scratch, but not all together. I mean, I don't want to do missions until I can afford anything. But there we go. This is our starting plot of the farm. We have tons and tons of stuff to discover here as well. We're also going to unlock this first field. And that's the only field we are going to unlock with that money. For the next one, we will have to work a little bit. With that out of the way, let's hop into the shop and purchase a couple of things. Oh yes, what should we do first? Well, first things first, we're gonna need to deliver a whole bunch of things. I mean, the fields are just absolutely huge. So we are gonna go with a reasonable truck. I think the one here for 130k should be good, but I want to give it a different color. Let's make this one white. Bit more expensive, but it's gonna be worth it. Buy that. Next up, we need a way to deliver efficiently. And this is where this trailer mod is gonna come in. As you can see, this map is providing many, many more goods than in the standard one. It doesn't even have the space to show it all. But what we can do with this guy is actually set it to a different configuration. We're gonna need two configurations. The first one is gonna be load bulk and another one as a load liquid. Let's do the load bulk first and we're gonna change the color for this so I know which one is which. For the bulk part, we're gonna go with a jet black. We could also go with a different design and I believe I'm just gonna go with the global company logo there. So that first trailer is gonna cost us 30k and then we need to buy another one responsible for liquids and this one is gonna be blue. I like that very much. Apart from this modded trailer, I also want to go with a trailer that I can use on the field and I believe this one here should be good. It is above 14,000 liters, which is what I need. And I'm probably just gonna leave that at the standard color. Should be good. Naturally, in order to harvest the fields, we're also gonna need a really good harvester and the fields are enormous, so we are not gonna go cheap here. I think, yeah, I'm gonna go for the New Holland here. Really huge loading capacity and it can take off quite a few crops. Oh yes, this is gonna be absolute insanity. Come to Papa, 430k down the drains. 
Of course, we are also gonna need an attachment for this big boy, which is actually the largest one. Okay, that's nice. 13.7 meters. I just love it. It is so freaking big, it comes with its own wheels. Give me that immediately. Maybe on some fields that we purchase, we're gonna need a subsoiler. So I'm gonna go with the largest one. Hmm, actually, should we do that? Yeah, it's still only 8 meters. Why not? It's gonna be worth it, but this requires a big tractor. Let me tell you that. But anyways, we need good starting equipment, so eh, we just have to buy it. We will also need a cedar. Let's have a look at what we can find here in the back. That might be a little bit too exaggerated to have two attachments here. I think I'm just gonna go with... Hmm, not even the Terminator. This also requires another attachment. Let's not go too crazy and maybe go with the Estrella 32. Yeah, sure, if we use that, actually, it's also getting cultivated and everything and even fertilized and we also can use the same horsepower for the tractor. So that is a good choice, in my opinion. And look at... Oh my gosh, I love it. 215,000... Okay, but, you know, we still spent less than what you would get in the normal starting scenario. Okay, we can plow seed and cultivate. The next thing is fertilization technology. For the fertilization, I'm actually gonna go with this one, since this one here in the center is the only one that can come with narrow tires, and that might be necessary if we fertilize over half-grown fields. We also want the big extension here, and of course the 6 meter spreading disc. That would be 48,000. Um, yeah, sure, give me one of those. Next up, for the lime, we are gonna go with this bad boy here. Lime I can usually do on the not-grown fields, so the tires don't matter. But you can see here, we can only have even wider tires. Not sure if that will be worth it. I'm just not going to do it for now. But we are going to have an extension and, of course, the spreading disc. 76,000. Holy cow. I mean, jeez. We don't even have our tractors yet. Oh, well, never mind. Another thing that I want is a loading wagon. And, of course, we also want to go with a really great one. I believe, yeah, one of those it's going to be. And they have almost no differences. Obviously, what we can do with those is grab all the grass, hay and straw we might produce on the fields. I think we just might go with the red one since it's cheaper and even has more capacity. Is there anything we can do? Configuration. Ah, of course. We might want that extension. Yeah, and we should easily get a tractor capable of doing this. So let's commit to this purchase as well. Is there anything I forgot? Yeah, crop protection. Of course, we're gonna go with the best one, the Hardy Navigator 6000 with 36 meters. I don't even want to know. This is insane. I'm gonna look forward to using that, actually. Um, let's purchase that as well. 115,000. Now, there's not much to go. I also want a pickup in order to draw the auto drive lines. And uh, I think... Think. What's the difference here? This comes with more horsepower. This might be worth it. Let's go ahead and customize this. I want a different color. This one should be blue. Maybe there's a different blue that looks a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's not too bad. I'm gonna go with that. Another 46,000 well spent. Last but not least, we're gonna need some tractors. Let's first of all have a look at the large category, since I already know I'm gonna need one with at least like 420 horsepower, but we're probably gonna go with an even larger one. Let me see. I need to be careful with my money a little bit. Uh, we need three tractors in total. The John Deere 8R series doesn't look too shabby. We should be able to upgrade the engine. So we have 450 horsepower. That is perfect. And since this one here is going to be our heaviest tractor, I think I'm actually going to go with twin wheels, but only in the rear. Or should we do both? Ah, let's do it in the rear. Let's not be, you know, too greedy here. But look at that. Looks amazing. But that is another 387,000 down the drains. Give me that. Mm -hmm. We're also going to need some smaller tractors, but we're going to go into the medium category. I think we might be able to get away with a cheap one here, the T6 series of New Holland. And if we upgrade the engine for 25k, we get 175 horsepower, which is enough for all the smaller works, such as fertilizing. Since we're gonna use this guy for fertilization, we might want to go with narrow tires. Yeah, that's what I wanted. So I'm gonna buy one with narrow tires and then another one with... Um, oh my gosh, this is insane. Let's do standard wheels here. And we might also want to go with a front loader attachment for this one uh, in case we want to add a shovel or anything of that nature. 
Actually, we could set up some wheel weights. I like that. Okay, that's another 130,000. I'm taking that. And now we're practically done with our purchases. Let's actually have a quick look at the shop. I just spent over 2 million. Oh, yeah. It might be a bit laggy here in the beginning. But here we go. Look at the beauties. Oh, I'm looking so forward to this. Now, I'm actually gonna play myself warm a little bit in order to understand the map before I get back to you and explain you everything I come across. However, one more thing we should go ahead and do together is grab one of these trailers and actually show you how to load this one up and unload it at our farm in order to be able to refill the cedars and fertilizers and everything we need over there. So first thing I probably want to do is grab a bunch of seed bags and we're gonna go with 10. That's as many as I can buy in a bulk. And we need to be a little bit careful with our money, you know. But as soon as we get close enough to the seeds, it's gonna automatically open. And what I can do now is just load it up. And this is gonna be so much more convenient than actually taking each pallet with a pallet fork and bringing it up there. I mean, there are gonna be quite different quantities in this map. And we really don't need to worry. There's gonna be lots to do for us. We will not come across moments where we literally can't do anything. We only filled this up by 25%. This is insane. So I could purchase like 30 more. That is going to be expensive. I think I'm only going to go with another 10 and then we bring it back to base. This should suffice to get us started at least. Okay, already looks much better. I don't feel as bad driving home with this load. See you later machines. Looking forward to driving you. Now, apart from having many selling stations and factories, this map is huge. It is four times bigger than a standard map and it comes with dozens of features. So it's going to be fun to actually produce my own fertilizer or lime. Actually, there's also a mine to dive into, which is going to be fun in order to get our own lime. So we don't have to purchase it anymore. We can gather it up, but there's just so much more. So I don't want to summarize it. I'm going to show you everything as we explore it. So if you're interested of edited gameplay and my journey on this map, definitely leave a like and also subscribe for future videos. Anyways, we made our way home. You can see this is where we have all the sheds and parking spaces for our vehicles. At the moment, I'm carrying some seeds. So we want to bring this over here to the middle station. I believe this is the seed station. Let me have a quick look at that. Yeah, here we go. Seeds. And obviously we want to go ahead and open this up before we unload. I'm not 100% sure that is actually necessary. Okay, gently bringing the truck over and it's time to unload. Let's have a proper look at that. We should now open up the doors here in the back and then, well, this is just how the mod works. But it is much better than the alternative, let me tell you. Now we're basically dumping everything into our storage and as soon as I have my cedar ready, we can bring it here and fill it up. Now, just looking through all the products here, look at that. That is just absolute insanity. I was wondering whether or not my seeds show up somewhere here. Yes, indeed. Look at that. We have a category for seeds and you can see my own silos contain 35k. So now I'm just going to bring my truck back to the shop and I'm going to do the same thing for the lime over there. And last but not least, we have some fertilizer. There's also going to be a storage for the crop protection that I haven't found yet, but there are so many things. Yeah, let me get used to this new map a little bit and the new machinery and then I'm going to be right back telling you all about it. Alrighty, we are back. It is now actually the next day for me. I've been working on this map for a little bit, trying to understand everything. I even restarted the safe game and purchased a few less vehicles. This is why I have more money at the moment. If we have a look at my garage, I only bought one of these trailers because I realized I don't need the liquid version at the moment. We still have the same tractors and truck and the combine. We also have the plowing equipment. However, I did purchase a different seeding machine and that is just because the refilling station is not tall enough for that seeder and I was always running into troubles automatically reseeding it. So I decided to go for the condor instead. We still have our lime and fertilization equipment. We have the weights and everything. So there's a couple of purchases I still will have to do. However, at this point, I thought I'm coming back to you because I've already done a little bit of work setting this map up with the auto drive mod and I've even got myself a little bit into course play and I want to show you that. First of all, you can see in the background, my equipment is being parked and I haven't done this myself. This was all auto drive. If we just enable this for a brief moment, you can see I've set a couple of things up and I'm going to show you how I've done that. 
However, before we do that, I want to show you a little something. So I'm going to just use up a tiny amount of lime, maybe 5% or so. And then we are going to automatically refill this and bring it back into the storage. So we have a little bit of lime that we want to fill up. The way we do that is we go into a different mode and I accidentally clicked this tractor. That's always happening now. We want to go into the load mode, which basically allows us to set a target and then a refilling station. I've already set up the waypoint for this and we want to fill up lime. So everything is already set to the correct destination and type so we can go ahead and drive forward. It is definitely a possibility that the lime wagon still is considered too full. So I'm not sure if he's 100% gonna fill that up. But the first thing is we need to drive to the location. And of course, I'm not touching anything right now. This is all happening automatically. My refill stations are right over there at the brown silos. Let's see what he's doing. Going in here, then... No, actually, he took the other path. So he is considering the lime wagon too full in order to actually fill up. But let me tell you what happens usually when the lime wagon isn't that full. You can see these waypoints here. We would usually drive into that direction and just beyond the point where I can fill this up, I have set the refill lime waypoint. So he's going to fill that all up. And as soon as it's full, he's going to continue on his merry way. We are then turning around at this point and we are going back to the beginning of the farm. So right at this point, I guess auto drive can take over again. You can see I've done this intersection. So all directions are accessible from all directions. And I just decided to take the two openings of my farm as an entrance and an exit and not both ways. So the vehicles are never going to get into troubles there. All right, here we are at the parking location. You can see it's just following these pathways and then it is actually going to drive backwards into the parking spot perfectly. Better than I could do it ever. We are just straightening the vehicle a little bit and then he is doing everything on his own. And I've actually moved the waypoints a little bit, so I'm not sure if this one is going to be 100% perfect, but it looks as though we at least get it somewhat. And here we are, the tool is parked and I could just go ahead and also park the tractor if I wanted to. Now in order to show you how I've done that, we're gonna hop here into the pickup and I wanna see the waypoints a little bit better. You might notice there are not that many waypoints. This is because I did a lot of it manually so it doesn't get too confusing. I'm actually gonna keep doing this somewhat manually. So we're gonna set up a waypoint here and just connect it like so. I don't want too many waypoints all over the place and not know what's actually going on. What I basically want to achieve is straightening out my vehicle in this line. So straight across from this empty parking space. That means I want to drive to approximately this point. All right. And we're going to have just a couple of points in between. Maybe two should be enough in order to get a nice pattern going. Now I want to make sure this waypoint is far off. So we have a lot of time to straighten whatever attachment I have. For instance, with the cedar right there, the condor, it takes much longer to straighten that out. After that, I want to set up three more waypoints and I actually, I don't want to connect them. Not sure why this happened automatically there. And we want to have another waypoint here. And all of these should be pointing straight into the parking space. Looking good. Now we are actually going to click this and then we're going to connect these points. But I want to use the shift button, which will give me a blue line indicating that this means backwards driving. Now, you don't have to do this manually like me. You can also go ahead and hit the record button. And then if you drive backwards with a vehicle, it is actually happening automatically. But I'm getting so many waypoints that it is confusing over time. So I decided to do this manually. But of course, you could just drive it. That's also a respectable option. Okay, now I think I'm going to move this just a tiny bit more. That seems to be a reasonable distance. Uh, there are three more points. That's what I mean. Too many waypoints sometimes. We then want one additional waypoint in front of each of these. And of course, they should also not connect. Maybe I have to release the control button in between. I think that might be it. I was holding the control button because, of course, control click is going to produce a point. And if I release the control button, OK, that is actually good to know. We then want to shift click those guys again. Shift click you, shift click you. And then as a last measure, we want to have the very last spot. Now you can draw this with your car. It is actually going to consider the attachment. So as soon as the attachment hits the waypoint, the action is considered completed. This means we want to go ahead and set up three more waypoints like so, if possible, perfectly centered. And I also want them far back, but not too far. Otherwise, the driver might not be able to get back there and complete the task. 
Good, with that out of the way, let's shift connect these guys as well. And then we just need to name the waypoints. Just gonna drive close enough in order to get it marked with the red line there. And we wanna call this parking and that's gonna be tool five. The one in the back is gonna be tool six. And then we have tool four right there. Wonderful. Three more destinations out of the way. I like that. Let me just straighten these lines a little bit. I do have an attachment that needs parking right here. So we can actually go ahead and test this out right away. Uh, maybe let's shut down a couple of engines here. Everything is running. I just came back from plowing my fields. It is now time to put this into parking tool 4. If you don't have many waypoints, the sharper corners you take, the slower your vehicles actually are. So the more waypoints usually means the more speed. But you know, it's not a competition. They are just gonna park and everything is gonna be fine. But now you can see he is straightening out the vehicle, going to the waypoint, and now he's gonna drive all the way back into parking spot four. And he's gonna do that absolutely perfectly. Well, in most cases, probably now it is going to fail. And there we go. Okay, okay, okay. The tractor is a bit large, but you know, after all, we parked the tool. We can now go ahead and release it. Maybe if I use this tractor in order to park the tools, we should go ahead and move the waypoint slightly to the right. And we're also going to move the waypoint back there slightly to the right. But you know, you get the basic gist, it is kind of working. And now I would like to set up parking spaces for my tractors as well, so they don't just hang anywhere, but they're actually going to a certain destination. Another thing we should consider is a connection into this grid here. This is going to allow me to move it into the other storage area, or the washing station. Talking about wash and repair, maybe let's go ahead and drive there. This tractor just plowed my fields. This surely can use a little cleaning. It's all repaired up. Let's take that, give it a good, nice clean. And then I would just have to hit the parking button for this vehicle. And my farm basically always looks clean and tidy. Since we already set up a parking spot, I think I can do the other ones off camera. Let's get to the more interesting part and actually set up a field using course play. And of course, now that I plowed my field, it is time to seed it. I've already filled this seeder up with fertilizer and seeds. I suspect we're not going to have enough seeds in order to do the entire field. So we will have to set up something interesting so course play and auto drive work together. However, the first thing I want to do is go to field 22. So that's exactly what I'm going to tell my driver to do. I made sure most of the waypoints are set in a way so that all of my equipment can get past without issues. But it might not be the worst of ideas to double check every now and then. So I'm just leaving the waypoint so you understand what's actually happening. Of course, overall, we want to keep them hidden. But there we go. We are just going to field 22 at the moment. What we should do to make the next task a little bit easier is actually make a two-way system all the way around the field. So wherever my tractor is when the cedar runs out of seats it's going to go to the closest edge of the field in order to drive around it but for the time being we're just going to keep this waypoint field 22. Now it's time to open up course play with control delete usually you can also open it up with a right click and I disabled that immediately because it's not really helping me out I can do that right here in the advanced settings. However, we probably want to start course play right here on the play button. I've already set up a couple of things. For instance, I made a folder right there. You can make a folder hitting this icon and I've input another folder called field 22. Right in this folder, I'm gonna keep all the courses that relate to this field. And you have to be a little bit careful because if I take a different plow, then I will have to add a different course. But anyways, let's get back into course play control. What we want to do is get rid of the currently loaded course. Before we start course recording, we want to make sure we click the right item here at the bottom. It is fertilizing or seeding that I'm doing right now. There are other options depending on the attachment you have. And then we want to get into course generation. This will open up a map. And the first thing we want to do is click the field we're working on. This is going to change that parameter up there. The starting location of the course is going to be the current vehicle position. That is good. Direction can be automatic. We want headlands. This basically means the seeder is going to take a couple of turns around the edges of the field. So it's going to start seeding in a manner such as this for a couple of rounds before it then goes into the straight patterns. This is going to make it much easier to turn around the seeder once we are actually doing the straight passes. Headland passes, let's say we want to do at least three, maybe four would also be a good... Yeah, let's do actually four and we want to do them clockwise. This only really matters for the harvester since 
If you do them clockwise, you can already have a trailer next to them in order to collect everything. We can also decide whether or not we want to start on the headland passes or want to do the up and down directions. I guess in certain scenarios this could be useful. Next thing are the headland corners. I don't want them smooth, I want them as sharp as possible. If you have set it too smooth, you just miss out on a couple of things and that hurts my eyes. We then also want to activate skip rows. I think I'm gonna skip two rows and what this is gonna allow is for a smoother turnaround once we get to the straight passes. So the machine doesn't have to straighten out and then drive backwards, it can just do basically a turnaround. Multiple tools is only if you have multiple seeders for instance. I haven't experimented around with that yet. And then the working width, you need to make sure that this is the same as your seeder. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and generate the cores. We then have the capability of actually checking it out a little bit. It starts with green going to yellow, orange and then red. So you can kind of see what the machine is doing. But it is covering the entirety of the field and, you know, you don't have to lift a finger. Once we generated the course, we can exit this window out again and the course is going to be saved as a temporary course. However, I know that I'm probably going to use that again, so I'm going to save it. Field 22 seeding. And if we now have a look at the management here, you can see it is at the base level. What we then want to do in order to move it into the right folder is, uh, let me see. Yeah, we want to click this folder icon with the little arrow once. And then we need to decide in which folder it goes. In my case, it's going to go in field 22. And now I have it in there. Field 22 seeding is collected. One more thing we have to make sure is that we use auto drive in order to refill the seats. For that, we have to go into a different mode with auto drive, namely this one here, load. Field 22 is going to be our target destination. This is when it hands the scepter over back to course play. We want to refill seats at our waypoint and the thing we want to refill is seats. Of course, this is just a waypoint name. This could also be named differently, but at the bottom we specify what we want to fill up. Fertilizer should be enough for this field. We will actually have to test that, but uh, I don't think there's a way for me to fill up both of the fertilizer and seed. But there we go. With that out of the way, I believe we are ready to drive the course, right? And it's going to automatically unfold the seeder, which is glorious, by the way. Yes, wonderful. And then we should be starting seeding and cultivating the field. There we go, looking good. Now it's just gonna trace on the edges of the field. And by the way, I went into another little mod in order to increase the speeds of all the working machines slightly, just by seven kilometers an hour. But you know, it's kind of understandable. It took like two hours to plow this field. If I hit control delete, I can actually see how long this is gonna take. It's still going to take approximately half an hour to finish this field. So there's uh, plenty of time to actually admire whatever is happening here. Now, I just love this mechanic. Over time, we're gonna run out of seats and this is when I'm actually gonna tune back in order to show you the refilling process and just how awesome that is. Okay, we're quite far into seeding the field, as you can see. Needless to say, we're not gonna have enough fertilizer in order to take care of this field. Now, just as a testing, I'm gonna leave the setting as I have them now. I would actually tend to set the waypoint of the fertilizer since that's a little further than the seeds and then hopefully the worker is gonna grab both of it. But if he doesn't, there's another thing I want to show you. So we want to test it out anyways. And there we go. We're out of seeds. The driver should now go back to the closest waypoint on the auto drive network and then he's gonna make his way to the refilling stations. Wonderful. So far, so good. Let's hope we can actually make it through the entirety of the network with this huge machine. Of course, I have a little tractor in the way. No problem. We are now approaching the refilling stations. You can see the cover is already opened up. And now he's actually driving carefully through the entire station until the trigger is there. This makes me believe we should take the trigger of the fertilizer, which is further away, because right now he is... Oh no, okay, I have to move the waypoints a little bit. Now this is what I wanted to show you. You can actually stop the auto driving. So I already know I will have to move a couple of waypoints in order to make this work. But what we're gonna do now is refill the fertilizer ourselves, which should be no problem. There we go. We're then gonna close the cover again. And what we're gonna do now is just resume the auto driving mechanism. This is gonna make him drive back to field 22 and then course play is gonna take over automatically again. But yeah, always good when you're there once you first test the system, because now I know what went wrong. And then as soon as we are at the waypoint, you can see he's going back to the exact same spot where he left off. 
Once he's done, I'm gonna tell him to go to the wash and repair station and then I'm gonna park it, everything automatically. And of course, right now I'm observing a little bit more. In the meantime, usually we would do other things. And this is the perfect way to get an empire going. I mean, this has so much potential, guys. I just love it. But yeah, I think with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap up today's episode. I sure hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.